I have spoken to you about various aspects of sex because it is the essential core energy and its transformation is very important. In this series, I will speak on a few talks that will include even the questions that have been asked. Sex, the essential core energy and its transformation. Sex, the essential core energy and transformation. Sex is energy, existential bioenergy. People have not understood this energy and the baser minds have defied the energy. And it happens that when the energy is not properly channelized, there is distorted results. And for that matter, Carl Gustav Jung says, Out of 40 years of my medical practice, I have come to this conclusion. If by the time one attains the age of 40, if religion is given to him, there is a possibility that man can be saved. This always happens. The human life goes on in cycles of seven years. And by the time the sixth cycle, which is of 42, I am not just speaking of mathematical 42. This is 40, some attains to that stage early. Others even after do not attain. And the problem arises that after the age of 42, the sex energy begins to move downwards. There is no possibility of its transcendence or upward movement. And the problem begins to crop up in life of male and female both after that age. This is the first series of talks first in the series of talks, sex, sex the essential core energy and transformation. Human life is synthesis and harmony of the opposites. It comes as totally pure and sanctified just as hailstorms that shower during the winter season. However, because of the Earth's atmosphere and its impurities, the hailstorms get polluted. Hailstorms is considered to be the purest form of water. It has many therapeutic values. If you have collected the water from the hailstorms and if there is a burn and using that water onto the affected area, it helps tremendously and then many other effects of it are there. But by the time it comes to the earth's atmosphere because of its pollution and many other things it gets contaminated. So too, sex is the essential core of human existence. It is one form of the existential bioenergy. However, the it got defiled by the baser minds. However, it gets defiled by the baser minds. We do not identify it as existential bioenergy. The electricity, the basic energies, the electricity, the water is supplied from one source. It runs through one channel but its outlets are different. It's not that the water in the kitchen is pure, purer than the water in the washroom, but it is identified as bathroom tap, kitchen tap, outside tap. And for human consumption, you do not use the water from other sources other than the kitchen tap. Although the water is coming from the same source, specifically for drinking, cooking and all other means, we do not use water from any other tap except the kitchen. 
the water is coming from the same source it is identified with the door it is exiting so to the sex energy exits in that form through the genitals and not only that it exhibits its exits throughout the other parts of the body as well through your eyes through your gestures if you are full of sex as it is known then your gestures your eyes your movements exhibit that this we have to understand when the problem arises with your electricity your bulb is getting fuse again and again you do not run to the priest asking him to give you a secret mantra so that your bulb do not get blown again and again you do not start chanting you do not start saying your prayers you go and discover the scientific reasons the reason is maybe there is fluctuation in the current in your area this could be because of the malfunctioning emanating at your end or at the national grid of the electrical supply or the bulb that you are buying that is of an inferior quality so you change the bulb a similar problem was arising in one of our outlets in the kitchen the bulbs were getting blown again and again i did not run to the priest asking him to give me a mantra a secret mantra so that this problem does not happen as it usually happens any time there is a problem arising with the children with the spouse we run to our priests asking him to say a prayer or give us a secret secret mantra so that we can chant and expect that by doing that or when the priest does the prayer your problem will be solved why you don't go when your fridge is stop working or your television is not showing the correct color why you don't run to the priest because you seem to be sensible as far as that is concerned but when it comes to the life energies existential energies and its mysteries we are tabooed we are we have misconceptions so when i spoke to the electrician i said this bulb is getting blown again and again check if there is a problem with the electric flow of the current or the terminal or anything then he showed me the bulb that i am using is of inferior quality and the terminal where it is it connects establishes a connection with the electric current it is turning blue and that is the sign that it is of an inferior quality change the bulb and the problem will be solved and since then we do not have to be worried and also remember the bulb has a life history and within that time it will give illumination it is manufacturers manufacturers emphasize that this bulb is capable of giving you a certain hours of light it is the proper functioning of the electrical energy that brings the illumination through the bulb so too it is the proper flow of the existential bio energy and its proper channelization that helps in allowing the illumination the illumination through the sex energy to come into the life of an individual and the final in that is when the existential bio energy is flowing without any restrictions correctly through the channels and ultimately reaches the terminal 
from where the illumination is possible, then you get the bliss and understanding as the outcome. Body, mind and spirit are all together and this togetherness is your consciousness. Remember body, mind and spirit are together and this togetherness is consciousness. You are born as an interaction between ovum and sperm. That which is your root cannot be polluted, cannot be wrong. It is the foundation on which the entire structure rests. It is up to you whether you decorate it or distort it. It is up to you whatever way you want to decorate the structure and present it. It all depends on your understanding and awareness. The foundation, the walls is the basic of each structure. The shape, the size of the structure will differ. Its anterior deco, the color of the walls, the color scheme, the deco inside, the curtains, the living room furniture and all other things will depend on you how you want to decorate it. And the house is known by its colors, by its deco and it is in that sense it differs. All the houses which are built in one particular locality as happens in townhouses, they are of the same structure, same number of rooms, same outer appearances, but yet still the anterior deck depends on an individual's taste, how he want to have the color scheme. Look at the townhouses. All the houses have the same structure, same amount of rooms, same design. But in each house you will find a different color scheme, different deco, different set of people living. It depends on the individual taste and understanding. Such is the nature of this existential bioenergy that we call sex. You have to understand it. Entering into a male-female relation depends on this understanding of the existential bioenergy. By attaining to physical maturity or puberty does not guarantee you that you can be a successful and understanding husband or wife or a spouse or parents. Being a parent is a biological function Male-female relation begins with biological function and the ultimate is the spiritual understanding and transcendence of this existential energy. Producing children is a biological function. All animals do this. When the existential bioenergy is at peak, without understanding, its functioning and role, we enter into the relation and ovum and sperm relationship creates the children. But there is no understanding. All animals produce children, but they cannot be the fathers or the mothers. Fatherhood and motherhood is an understanding. The relationship between the animals being the father all animals have the mother and father. They know the mother, but the father is not known. Because to know when a child is born in any form, it is connected with the mother, which is earth element. But to know the father, you need an understanding. 
you need an awakening. Animals do not recognize father. It is only the human being that quality is bestowed onto the human being alone who can recognize father. And then the next stage comes that of master. Not every human being can recognize the presence of a master. It is even subtlest. To recognize mother is gross. To recognize father is subtle and to recognize the master is subtlest. Because each operates at a different plane. The mother is the earth element. With these three elements, Nanak explains this stage, this through an example. In the final analysis of his message of Japji Sahib, Nanak says, Mata Dharat Mahat. The mother is compared to the earth element. Pavan Guru Pani Pita. Pani means water. Father is like the water that flows, and flow is the energy. Consciousness. Father is like the water that flows. Mother is the earth element, and the master is breeze like. You can feel its presence, but you cannot see it. Your air condition, your fan will be blowing the air, but you cannot see it. It is a subtle presence. Father is like the water that keeps on flowing. You can see it, you can feel it. This is an understanding. All animals, they have mothers but not fathers because they do not have the consciousness to recognize the father. And all human beings do not have the consciousness, do not have the understanding, do not have the awareness to recognize the subtle presence of a master which is subtlest of all. Apparently, the master looks like you, maybe worse than you, but his understanding is of a totally different level to recognize this. To recognize this particular person is a great teacher of his discipline. You have to know that discipline. Not that based on hearsay that this is a great doctor. But you have to have the experience and understanding of that. Remember, sex is like the diamond, the sex energy, as precisely we can call it. Sex is the like the diamond now extracted from the mine, raw and unpolished. In that state, it is not appreciated and it has no value. It has to be transformed. It is the diamond cutter who gives the raw diamond a shape, form and elegance by working on it. And then it becomes the precious item that can adorn any ornament or anything else. It is the diamond cutter who has to work on it to give it a shape, form, elegance to the raw diamond. So too it is the individual consciousness, individual understanding that gives sex a form, a shape, elegance, understanding. Only then this energy can become an illumination. It can be transformed. It can become bliss. It can become a great understanding. It is the diamond cutter who makes raw and polished mind diamond precious. So is the case with sex. It is the baser it is 
bees in that form just as the diamond as it is extracted from the mine is bees the process of transformation requires converting the base into the precious your awareness and understanding will define it you cannot negate it howsoever you try it is part of you there are certain traditions that castrate the genitals no such insensible act religious or otherwise can free you from the bondage of sex it is only your understanding which transcend you and the outlet of this energy the door from which the energy exhibits itself will change with understanding and awareness then the same existential bio energy the same water which was frozen becomes a steam it is through an effort and understanding sex is energy the bio existential energy when it when it expresses in a certain form through a certain gateway it becomes sex or is known as sex but it is you it is part of your existence the very concept of kundalini emphasizes the transcend of this energy from base to precious in hindu epic mahabharat there is an episode it comes and is associated with the life of hindu god krishna the hindu incarnation the god incarnation of krishna according to hindus the water of the blue river yamuna got polluted because of the poisonous snake dwelling there along with its family the snake that lived there was the king and very powerful and its presence made the water poisonous and unsuitable for human consumption such is always the case with sex energy when it is not understood it is poisonous when it does not flow into the right channel your electric current has to flow through the channels that have been provided for it for it by the electrician if there is a leakage at any place the illumination will not be there and this energy can give you shocks and if one is exposed to that one can lose one's life this is what happens that electrocution takes place when someone is exposed to that light, that high voltage current and electrocuted there have been examples like this now krishna in order to sanctify the water of the blue river krishna played his illusionary spell which according to hindus is called maya it is always when according to the scriptures the spell of maya is done it is for transformation it is for a specific reason when father exhibits or the mother exhibits a voluntary anger towards the child it is for bringing a transformation in the child or breaking his bad habits that he has cultivated it is a purposeful and the purpose is the transformation transcendence in vedantic terms it is known as maya or illusionary spell self created by the awakened one for the process of transformation he creates a situation which is known as illusion simply to become to create transformation so accordingly while playing with cowherd boys he deliberately threw the ball in the river 
This created a chaos among the boys who insisted Krishna to get the ball. Krishna pleaded that he will get a new ball, another ball. But the boys insisted they want the same ball that has fallen into the river. In order to satisfy those, as a part of the spell of illusion, Maya, Krishna jumped into the river to get the ball. Time flowed on, Krishna did not emerge. Now the boys got very worried. They ran and informed the parents that Krishna jumped and when they came to know what was the reason, then one of the boys said that it was this boy who was insisting to get back the same ball that has fallen into the river and as a result Krishna jumped into the river and everybody knew that the river is plagued by the presence of a poisonous snake so they all feel what will happen to Krishna my son the parents the, the milkmaids all other cowherd clan Krishna jumped into the river to get the ball there he encountered the king of snakes who was sleeping. And you remember when you are sleeping, you are dormant and your energies are at its peak. It can be molded in any form. This is why masters use the opportunity when someone is, has fallen into a sleep. That time there is no distortion of the mind. The mind is not at its play. Your consciousness is at the level of unconsciousness, not subconsciousness. Unconsciousness or subconsciousness. It is not affected by the conditionings of the mind. That's the time the work takes place. The master senses energy. There is nothing, no conditioning is there to distort. So Krishna shook him so vigorously that his deep sleep broke and this is the role of the master. When you come in the company of the master, he shakes you so vigorously that you have uh, immediately no other choice but to come out of the deep sleep. A fearsome battle broke between the two. In the battle, the snake king was badly wounded and he was struggling for survival in the hands of Krishna, the embodiment of absolute consciousness. It is in the hands of consciousness, the understanding, that all these distortions are badly wounded and struggle for their survival. Krishna was ready to kill the snake king. But then the wives of the snake king implored, the queens implored Krishna to forgive the king for his atrocities. Pleased with the implorations, Krishna instructed the snake king to go elsewhere. The emphasis is on the word is elsewhere, along with the family and the kingdom. Go elsewhere. This word is very, very significant and it is the soul of the entire episode of this Krishna jumping into the river and it is the soul in the process of the transformation of this existential bio energy. Go elsewhere along with the family. The enlightened Krishna purposely does not tell the snake king to go to any specific place. Why does he say so? When a father gets angry or the mother gets angry with the child who is misbehaving, tells him straight away to go into your room. I say you go to your room. He does not say that uh, go elsewhere or specifically says go out and play with the children. I am doing something. Krishna tells the snake king to go elsewhere but he does not instruct him to go to any specific place. Simply instructs him to go elsewhere. Why did Krishna say so? Such are the ways of the enlightened masters. He never imposes his views on anyone. Instead, he simply creates the situation. 
Remember each individual seeker is unique. His growth pattern is different and each seeker comes with a specific purpose or role and the master prepares him accordingly. Remember there are various openings for the dormant energy to manifest but the ultimate opening is enlightenment. However, there are myriad other possibilities as well. Therefore, the enlightened Krishna instructs the snake king to go elsewhere. Leave that place where everyone finds, everyone uses that water. That water was the life source for the entire village of Vrindavan, where Krishna lived, where the river was flowing. It was that understanding, the flow is consciousness. That level of consciousness is ordinary level of consciousness and everybody acts according to that. Krishna instructs the snake to go elsewhere. The dormant energy that was frozen moves seeking other doors for its release. So the energy that was existential bioenergy does not use the door of sex to release itself. It can release through other sources, sources of intellect. It can manifest in the form of a song a dance, a creativity, the other sources are myriad. Someone becomes a painter, someone becomes a sculptor, next one becomes an artist, channels that energy into that, these are the myriad other possibilities in which the existential bioenergy can exhibit itself in its present form and through the door of the genitals, if it is not properly channelized, then this becomes the only door it creates a chaos problem. And this is what happens and when Carl said by the time one attains to age of 40, if religion is not given to him, he will be insane. And if religion is given to him, the understanding, the awareness comes into that person, that energy becomes a great source of illumination and it exhibits, attains to enlightenment. This is what happens with the ordinary people. Krishna then appears dancing on the poisonous fang of the snake king and thus he emerged from the river which brought joy among all that have gathered, the parents, the cowherd boys, the milkmaid, and even the boys who had insisted on Krishna to get the same ball. However, Krishna destroyed all other demons who came to destroy him. The demoness Putna who came to destroy Krishna when he was an infant. She came smeared with poison on her breasts, thinking that as Krishna will suck the poison that is smeared on her breasts will kill Krishna. The vice versa happened. So he killed all the demons who attacked his life, but he spared a snake king. He was also a devil, causing a great distortion to the life of the village, the, the people that have lived on the banks of river Yamuna by polluting its water and making it unsuitable for human consumption. When sex is distorted and there is lack of understanding, it makes that energy completely unsuitable for life. Distortion happens. This is what you see that there is so much of chaos in human life. When this energy does not flow through the channels properly, 
and it exhibits, it leaks through this opening and that opening. That is the cause of distortion, pain and pleasure in human life. It has to reach to its destination. The energy that is flowing, the electrical energy that is flowing from your main box to a particular terminal has to reach there uninterrupted. It passes through various chan various stages. There are junction boxes from where the energy that is flowing into your bedroom upstairs has many junction boxes, many crossroads from where it goes to the other channels, it goes into the other directions. All that those channels have to be cleared, all those crossroads have to be totally clear. Only then it can ultimately reach to your bedroom and can illumine the room that was in darkness. So to human life in the absence of awareness is in dismal darkness. It is the understanding that illumines and removes the darkness. For that very reason, this existential bioenergy has to flow correctly and this is the entire discipline of Kundalini Yoga. But it has become more theoretical than actual transforming force. Krishna spared the snake king. If in the first place that king was destroyed, what would have happened? Your life is finished because if in your house you do not bring the electrical energy, how can there be illumination inside the house? How long can you remain or depend on the light of the sun or the moon or the outside street light in order to decorate your life, to have entertainment and all other things that are necessary for human life? You must have your whole house, every nook and corner of your house, the laundry room, the washroom area because it is not always during the daytime that you take a bath or you go to the washroom or go to the laundry area. Because of the busy schedules of the work, it is only in the night when you return home you go to the laundry area to have your clothes laundered. If there is no light, how can you do that? So in the same way, your existential bioenergy cannot remain stuck at a particular point. The problem that arises in human life, in male-female relationship that we get stuck at a particular place because it is the energy that is not moving beyond that channel and it remains stuck at the level of sex, the outlet through the genitals. And when it is not moving upward, it begins to flow downwards and there is ugly exchange of words between the couples. The couples who could not live without one another, one who was the center of life, the situation of your spouse was like that without sun, the person was like sun, without who the sun never rose and never set. What had happened? All of a sudden that person does not create any ripples in you? That person is no more significant in your life? What went wrong? Actually what went wrong is that the energy did not move beyond the sex outlet, the door of sex. If it did not move, then the problems of myriad nature comes into life. Because now you cannot climb the hill. In order to climb the hill, you have to pedal your bicycle. Your vehicle have to work differently. So 
the age of 42 is the hill top it is only when there is car is for your automobile is working in the right way you have right energy to pedal extra energy extra understanding extra awareness is required to pedal vigorously your vehicle so that you can reach the hilltop and when you reach the hilltop what happens that you simply allow the vehicle to move you do not even have to accelerate you do not even have to pedal the bicycle with the slope with the slope the vehicle moves automatically without any effort. If in reaching to that hilltop of 42 years of life, you have reached, you have moved to that hilltop with awareness, with understanding, then the life afterwards will be that of harmony, transcendence is just a flow. But if it has not happened, then many kinds of distortion, ugly exchange of words. The one who was this, one without who sun never rose, never set in your life, were you wrong then? When you had defied all the family members, all your friends to choose this person as your spouse, were you wrong then? No, you were not wrong then. Because the existence knocks at your door only through the physical door. Your attraction for the face of the person, the, it is all biological attraction. But by the time the existential energy is at its peak, you must reach to the hilltop. And if you cannot, distortion, the ugly exchange of words, divorce, Breakdown of the communion, breakdown of the relationship is the outcome, nothing else. Now, how that can be corrected? Such is Hindu understanding. And this is the essence of Kundalini. This does not mean you go and join the Kundalini Yoga class, nothing will happen. Because those people do not have the awareness. They have heard in the wilderness somewhere that Kundalini does this thing. It is like the difference between Gurdjieff and Krishnamurti. Gurdjieff has the methodology. He talks about methods and methods and methods. When you follow a particular method without understanding, you are like a mechanic who can fix the car, but why and how if the technicalities are to be seen, he does not know. It is only the automobile engineer, which is in the form of your, the devices, the computer devices which helps you to devise the actual problem. Gurdjieff is like a mechanic who knows, he is like the compounder who sees the prescriptions during the time when flu has broken, out, there is an outburst of a particular flu. Doctors prescribe the medicines, they give the prescriptions, these prescriptions reach to the pharmacist who had been going through all the prescriptions to whom in each prescription a different set of medicine is prescribed. The doctor does so after examining the patient and his innerness. But by just looking at the prescription, the pharmacist cannot consider himself to be a master, a physician. He will create more damage. Up to a certain extent, when it is common ailment, he can assist you. Yes, you have a headache, take a Panadol and it will help. But if the headache is arising because of any other reason, headache is only a show window, a showcase of something else, then the pharmacist can create damage to you. Gurdjieff is one of those. Krishnamurti, on the other hand, have great understanding. He has understanding of the problems and the situations and he goes on speaking endlessly, vigorously, without having to exhibit any method, methodology. You must know the practical, must know the theory of what this happens, theory of the automobile engine. That is what it is taught. 
when it comes to the catering class you go, you are given the theoretical understanding of the microbiology, many understanding of each spice and many other things and then you are put into the practical training. When you go to the class of chemistry, you learn the theory of the organic substances, inorganic substances and how these substances can be tested and then you go in the lab to do the, your own tests. The knowledge gets perfected. These people, because when you are a mechanic, you attract many cars, many people, rich, poor of all denominations, they come to this mechanic because the garage is very good. So all these yoga centers, temples, churches are like the big garages. The more beautiful the garage is, the more advertisement is of that garage, it attracts the people. But whether the person is capable of doing this or not, you come to know only through the experience when you come to internet. Maybe he can damage your vehicle, then no repair can be done. You have to go to the real mechanic then thereafter or carry your car to the diagnostic center. Master is the diagnostic center. Diagnosis and then prescribes the correct solution for it. Kundalini can be of great assistance in the hands of a man of awareness. When Kundalini is aroused, the sleeping serpent energy is transformed and moves to elsewhere. Where and what happens to it then? This Know this as transformation. This is the reason that Krishna does not instruct the snake to go to any particular place. Because who knows, this existential bioenergy can exhibit in an individual through the outlet of his creativity as a dramatist, as a drummer, as a musician, playing a particular instrument or a vocalist or a painter then he pours his entire energy into that creativity. If it has not happened, then pour your entire energy into something which is close to your heart, into creativity. But at the same time, remember when for the first time, love gripped you, love gripped you, you had liked a particular person as your spouse. Were you wrong? Can anybody dare to change your decisions? No, you relied on your words. How can you do vice versa? Because, the, and, and then you are blaming the other for the problems that has been the outcome of your own lack of understanding and proper channelization of this energy. Remember the first day when you met your spouse, when love gripped you, Continue to remember this, the problem that you claim that it is there. The problem of male-female relation will not be there. Be guided by this first day of your meeting when love gripped you. Now you understand that their problem has arisen because of this. The communication problem, the understanding problem is because of the not proper channelization of this energy. That time, First thing that is required is to channel your energy into something creative. So the energy that can become anger, that can become frustration, that can become the exchange of ugly words can be transformed into creativity. Channel that energy into any channel where it can be creative. And then, and then let this understanding of the first meeting be always there with you. There will be no problem arising, no problem arising whatsoever. Because the same energy which can be utilized as exchange of words, then you remember Buddhas. Do you want to remain a dull-witted or an awakened Buddhas? When someone comes to Buddha, Buddha was not scheduled to go to any particular place, village, but that morning he reached to that village and as he reached there, a man came, emerged from the crowd. He 
abuse Buddha, but that did not affect the still Buddha. Buddha is still this. Then he cursed. Still nothing happened. Then he spit on Buddha. Still nothing happened. But it affected his disciple Anand. He said, Buddha, you are such an innocent person and this man is doing all these things to you and you are simply laughing. Buddha said, Anand, this man has not done anything to you. Why are you opening an account? And when time comes to repay, you will not remember this, that it is the outcome of this particular incident when you have raised your fingers towards the action of this person. He has not done anything to you. Do you know why I have come to this village? I have come to this village only because of this person. I entered into this relationship only because I had some unfinished works. I had some unfinished things to finish. That's why I had entered into this relationship. There was no cause for me to enter into any relationship with any person, male or female. I have no cause to enter into you, a relationship with you, enter into a communion with you. I am not bound or compelled to come this every week morning to speak to you on meditation. I am not compelled. I have attained to that stage knowing which nothing else is needed. What will be my gain? What will be my gain if you are transformed and understanding comes to you? There is no gain for me. I could have been sleeping and taking my rest and doing things which I would have to do and put aside in order to have this meditation session simply because many years ago I was just like you and someone's compassion helped me to undergo this process of transformation. I remember the beautiful words on an epitaph written in a graveyard. Look at me, O oh, passers by, as you are now I was ever. Look at me, O oh, passers by, as you are now I was ever. As I am now, you will be in, you will be in future. The understanding that I have, let that understanding be part of your life. You can go through every, any storm that life brings with awareness and understanding. You will gain serenity, harmony and oneness within you. That is the process, that is the methodology to go through with an understanding. Look at me, O passers-by, as you are now, I was ever ignorant. But now with the grace of the Masters, with awareness and understanding, you will also be one day like that. But you have to continue your journey going through the storms. One of my compositions which has been the part of the book, Tasavvuf, the Spirit of Sufism or the Essence of Sufism. One day I rose in the ocean of life like one of the myriad waves. जिंदगी के समंदर में उठा था एक दिन लहरों सा। One day I rose like one of the myriad waves in the ocean of life। मिट आज चला सागर की गहराई में। Today I have disappeared in the vastness of the ocean, vastness of the existence, vastness of the understanding। रह गई ये खामोशी सी हर मौज में। Now there is simply a serenity, a silence. In every circumstance and situation, every storm that life presents, every situation and circumstance that comes into the life like the storm, it appears as if the storms have become tranquil. Raga ye khamoshi si har mauj mein, tu fano ko jaise sahil mil gaya har reh guzar. It appears as if that every storm of life has found a shore. Tufano ko jase sahil mil gaya har reh guzar mein. In every circumstance and situation, mit aaj chala sagar ki gehrai mein today I disappeared into the vastness of the ocean of consciousness. Reh ga ye khamoshi si har mauj mein now there is. Mauj means every situation. Storm. 
रह गई एक खामोशी सी देर इज ओनली ट्रैंक्वालिटी या डांसिंग एंड सिंगिंग ट्रैंक्वालिटी नॉट द ट्रैंक्वालिटी ऑफ ग्रेव यार्ड बट डांसिंग एंड सिंगिंग ट्रैंक्वालिटी रह गई एक खामोशी सी हर मौज में तूफानों को जैसे साहिल मिल गया हर रह गुजर में तूफान मीन्स स्टॉप तूफानों को जैसे साहिल साहिल मीन्स शोर मिल गया हर रह गुजर में इन एवरी सिचुएशन एवरी सरकम स्टांस इट एपीज दॉम्स दैट मे बिकम स्टॉम हैज नाउ बिकम अ शोर इफ देर इज अवेयरनेस इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग You remember the first day in the company of your spouse, how you felt elated, full of joy, and you came home. You wanted to share that moment that you spent with your spouse, with your family members, with all those who loved you dearly, your friends, your mother, your father, whoever you met. You were dancing, flying. you want to speak to the birds the rivers the mountains anything that you anyone and anything that you meet you want to share the joy of meeting with your spouse it happens suddenly that person does not create any ripple in your life remember the first day when you met renew the meeting of the first day again and again in your consciousness life will attain a new meaning because if you on top of the hill if you stop or while you climbing the hill you suddenly stop the car you have to start all over again and you do not know whether you will gain the same momentum it is the continuation you keep on accelerating the vehicle whatever impediment comes because the your car has become old the energy level is less so you cannot move as vigorously as you are moving on the flat surface life is like a hill you have to climb to reach onto the top and then start descending the age of 42 is the hill top the pros before that you have tremendous energy allow that energy without any leakages to reach to the hill top so that your descent from the hill top becomes smooth and easy the life after 42 is the life of descent if by the time one attains the age of 42 40 if religion is given to the person if awareness and understanding comes in an individual this existential bio energy will move in the right channel without any leakages then the same existential bio energy which continues to move as sex through the doors of sex becomes sexuality and distorted in many ways reaches the peak of its energy and becomes enlightened becomes compassion this is the ultimate flowering of human consciousness of this existential by energy only this much up to now for this morning on this topic i will continue on this the other aspects of it according to the scriptures tomorrow's talk until then take care and do have a pleasant